Hey, what's up guys? I hope you're all well and healthy. I'm Patrick and this is where I ramble about tech and other stuff. Okay, so I lied. You got me. I'm gonna show you 11 apps today, not 10. But come on, 11 best apps for students just doesn't have the same ring to it, does it? So I put 10, it's 11. Let's deal with it, shall we? So if you're a student, the iPad and especially the iPad Pro is pretty much the perfect tool for you. It's small enough to toss in any bag and just take it with you wherever you go. But what really sets it apart from a laptop is the fact that you can take handwritten notes on it, which obviously makes it perfect for lectures or classes. Plus, there are just so many great apps available that you can do pretty much anything on an iPad. So here are 11 apps that are just perfect for students. Hold up. First off, let's talk calculators. The iPad doesn't have one, and yes, that's dumb. Thankfully, the good people at Calzi got you covered. I'm not gonna spend a bunch of time talking about it, it's a calculator. But you need one, and Calzi offers a super useful widget for your home screen, and that alone makes it worth downloading. In case you just started college, we need to talk about email. I'm slowly turning into an old fart, so we used to send a raven. Okay, no we didn't, but I did grow up using emails. I know most of you prefer to use messaging app these days, and I get it, but universities and places of business still prefer to use emails, so you might as well use a good one. I don't like Apple's Mail app, and the best alternative for me is Airmail. Airmail lets you add whatever kind of account you want, and it lets you choose whether you want your messages to be threaded or not, which is a big deal for me because I hate threaded emails. It also lets you pick your own icon, which is useful when you use a bunch of different email addresses. It's got a decent ribbon with text editing options, and it has this huge list of actions in a separate toolbar. Part of being in university is that you're gonna have to do a ton of presentations. I don't know about you, but if I see another PowerPoint presentation, I'm gonna scream. People always end up putting way too much text on their slide, so your audience will just start reading your slides and stop listening to your actual presentation. The perfect slide visually supports what you have to say, so a carefully selected image can be much more powerful. A really cool, super intuitive and easy to use app is Haiku Deck. As soon as you open a new project, you're immediately asked to add a few lines of text. On the left menu bar, you can then choose to support that text by either an image, a graph, or a video. Although videos are only available on the paid version, they do have a discount available for students, so check it out. Haiku Deck offers a huge library of high-resolution images for you to use. All super easy to find via search, and of course you can also use your own images. Alternatively, you can pick a quick chart and adjust it to match your figures. Or you can simply choose a solid background. Next, you pick a layout, add notes if you want to, and move on to the next slide. What makes this app really interesting though is that you can use your iPhone both as a remote control for your presentation and as a teleprompter. Simply add private notes to your slides and you will see them right under the relevant slide on your remote. That way, you will never forget what to say. Speaking of presentations, when you're on the listening end of one, you're gonna wanna take notes. If you're lazy, like me, Otter Voice Meeting Notes is perfect for you. It's originally designed to transcribe video conferences on Zoom, Google Meet, and Microsoft Teams. But you can just as easily use it in a real-life setting. The transcription tool is super powerful, so all you have to do is hit the little microphone to start recording and it will do the rest. The result is a neatly typed transcript of your lecture. Add a title and correct any mistakes and presto, your report is done. The app automatically adds date and time, as well as keywords to the meeting note, so you can easily find it later. You can easily share your notes with others or export audio or text in several formats to whatever app you like to use, like Evernote. If you've been to this channel before, you've heard me rave about Evernote. Evernote is definitely the OG note-taking app and I've been using it for many years because it's just that good. You can type your own notes or you can send just about anything into the app. Scans, emails, images, web pages, audio, you name it, and make it all instantly searchable. Unlike most other organizer apps, Evernote works with tags more than folders. I mean, technically, you could create a folder for everything, but you don't need that. I just use two folders, Inbox for everything that comes in and hasn't been organized yet, and Reference for everything that has. Let's say you took notes in a history lecture. Just tag it as lectures and history. 
That way, it will show up when you search for lectures, or history, or both. But even if you don't use tags, you'll still be fine because search in Evernote is so powerful that it will find any keyword in your file within seconds. The big advantage of Evernote having been around for so long is that virtually every app will let you export to it and every browser will have a plugin. If you like to take handwritten notes, definitely check out Notability. Good Notes and Notability have been considered the best note-taking apps for the iPad for quite some time, and I completely agree. Good Notes has a lot more options to choose from, like paper templates. But for me, Good Notes is a no-go, simply because it doesn't have a voice record option. Notability lets you record sound while you take notes, and the absolute coolest feature is that you can tap on what you wrote, and it will play back whatever was being said at that time. So you could also choose to just write down bullet points and use them as chapter markers for a voice note, which makes it super easy to skip to the relevant part of the recorded lecture. I use the Apple Pencil for taking notes, but there are plenty of cheaper alternatives out there. If you're given paper handouts during a lecture, just scan them using Scannable. Not only is it one of the best scanner apps around, it's made by Evernote, so you can save it to the right Evernote folder or tag straight from the app. Don't worry, if you don't want to use Evernote, you can email it from within the app or send it to whatever app you like. If you don't want to send it anywhere, it'll just save to your camera roll. For typing essays and other long-form text, I would still recommend Microsoft Word for the iPad. It has a lot of the same options as the full desktop version and it just works really well. I do prefer using Google Apps to collaborate on stuff, which is obviously essential if you're a student, but Google Apps haven't been optimized for the iPad yet, so they're just not practical to you. Plus, it's perfectly easy to convert a Word document into a Google Doc and share it with your classmates for collaboration. Now, let's talk planning. You obviously have a lot of different classes, and those classes have a lot of different assignments, and those assignments are chopped up in different segments, so it's really easy to lose track of everything. Trello lets you use boards, cards, and checklists to manage everything. Plus, you can share your boards or cards with others, which makes it an incredible collaboration tool as well. You could create a board called School and put all your projects in there in the form of cards. Within a card, you can add to-dos, so you can check off the ones you've taken care of, attach documents, create labels, set reminders, and if it's a collaboration, you can invite people and assign stuff to them. Trello is based on the Kanban system, which basically follows the to-do, doing, and done system. Once you start working on a project, simply drag the card from to-do to doing. And once you're done, you can drag it to done, in case somebody needs to still check it for approval. If not, you can just archive it. Trello is available for your desktop, your iPad, and your phone, so you can always add stuff on the go and be reminded wherever you are. If you're an art student or you just like to be creative in your spare time, I can definitely recommend Procreate. This app is incredibly feature rich. It offers a ton of different brushes, you can work with layers and the list goes on and on. I am by no means an artist, but the cool thing about Procreate is that you can start out super easy and grow as an artist learning to use more of its features. Because the app is really popular, you can find tutorials everywhere. I like to use Skillshare for those. I have a link in the description with my code, which will give the first 1,000 subscribers two months of free Skillshare Premium, so go check that out. Of course, the college experience is not just about studying, and you're gonna need to blow off some steam every now and then. A great way to go, especially if you're in a new city, is Yelp. I mean, the app has been around for a long time, but it's a great way to discover places, and not just restaurants either. You can search for coffee shops, bars, and nightclubs too. So if you need to know where to get your next hangover, not only does Yelp have your back finding a place, it would also be a lot easier to retrace your steps to find out where to start looking for that wallet you lost. If you want to find some more awesome apps, feel free to click one of these cards. Thumbs up if you liked the video, thumbs down if you're the guy who started this whole coronavirus business. Go on, hit this like. We'll find you. See you in the next one.